In this video, I'm going to write a PRD or a product requirement document with you so you can see how to get it done in the most efficient and simple way possible. Hey everybody, what is going on? My name is Eric and in the last year alone, I've generated more than $4 million with my SaaS company. In this channel, we teach you how to get it done yourself if you wish to live life on your own terms and build your own SaaS. So just make sure to hit that subscribe button and like so you know whenever we release new content. Let's just jump into the video and write this PRD together. Okay, so a few days ago, I came up with an idea to launch certain app that is very simple for the Shopify app store. You can implement it wherever you want, but I think that's a good beginning because I build apps for Shopify and that's the market I know best. Now, I don't know if you remember, but about two years ago, I think something like that, Ruth created a very good template for creating a PRD. So in this video, I'm going to use this template. If you want to get this template for your own, that's not a problem. Just go to the description below. There's a link to our website there. You can subscribe and get that template directly to your email. When I wanted to book a vacation on booking.com, I went to the booking.com website and I saw this pop-up saying sign up with Google and because I didn't have an account I was just clicking with a single click and I had a new account suddenly and I didn't have to worry too much about sign up or anything like this of course they got my email they got everything and I figured out why not just put it on Shopify why not put it on every website sounds like a very good thing to do so I did some research and I found out that this solution is called Google one tap and I said hey let's just bring it to the masses let's just bring it to multiple websites you can also collect emails and then that sounds like a good solution for e-commerce merchants so pretty basic stuff now let's just jump into my screen I'll do some basic product research before we actually write the specification document all right so if I head over to Google one tap all right so I can find here some documentation about it and I've also done some digging and I found a few case studies that Google published about one tap and how it improved a lot of signups for different websites so let's find it out all right so let's find it. Yeah, as you can see here, there are a few super big websites that doubled their amount of signups just by using this Google One Tap technology. And this is something you can use for your marketing later on when you do it. Okay, so that's a good start. I can see here some websites got even 8x on their results, which is amazing. So if you want, you can read more, but that's a good start. Then if I'm going to Shopify, let's find the competition there. So if I head over to the App Store, let's just search for One Tap. Sign in, Ico. Let's check this first six. If any of them are doing this, that's fine. Yeah, this is for sign up for the website. That's different. I'm looking at this as a way to collect emails, which is super important for merchant, not necessarily to sign up as an account to the store because nobody really does this for any store unless it's a very popular store like an AliExpress or something. Right? But I don't see there is no demo store and I don't see anything for that in here just sign up with Google but it's not showing you the widget that I was talking about earlier uh, Heiko social logging yeah again that's logging I don't see like a prompt to provide your email in here as well so that's not a competitor this one okay maybe with Facebook interesting no but again it's the sign up page it's not the same idea I'm trying to get a way to collect email quick like a prompt on the website what is this that's completely irrelevant all right and oh that's the thing that's the thing we're looking for. Let's see on the demo store what it looks like. If I scroll up and down, where is it? Not showing up. Here we go. Uh, wait a second. Oh, here we go. So here is it. That's what I'm looking for. A way to collect emails from customers, visitors. The first time they're coming to the website, I feel that he also offers a discount in exchange for this thing here. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. That's a competitor, definitely. Fairly low, fairly low in terms of, of volume. This is definitely not it. Okay, so seems like that's the only competitor we have. If we look at email collection as a whole, it's a very competitive space. But I think if you go small, and expand from there. We're not talking about marketing right now. We're just talking about the product specification document. So if this is the feature that we have right now, just displaying this thing, I think we're good to go in terms of creating the specification document from scratch. So now I'm just going to head over to the template root created back in the day and start editing it according to this product and what we want. Let's have a look at this is probably his onboarding process. Again, starting out, I think all we need to have in this product is just a single toggle or a single button to activate or deactivate this feature then sending the emails to Shopify that's all we need everything else can go to the second version and one of the most important tips and one of the most important things you need to know when it comes to writing a PRD 
is focusing solely on the MVP. You can write a bigger document, but you need to highlight what's coming in the first version and everything that comes from the second version beyond. Don't make it too big. If you want to save on money, if you want to bootstrap, if you want to build the software in the most affordable way, we must cut on expenses, meaning going with the minimum viable product. All right, so I think we're ready. This is the template for product requirement document. Let's just call it one click email collector, whatever. Okay, so for general functionality, I'm just gonna highlight everything here. Let's just go with general functionality. All right, so that's the goal. The goal would be to collect as many emails from visitors as possible. Now let's talk about payment plans. If we wanna go very light at the beginning, we can go live free of charge. In terms of pricing, what we wanna do is copy pretty much what they're doing, just maybe offer better pricing so we can win in pricing. Now I look in their pricing, it seems like they are free to install and then it's free up to 20 email captures and then it's five cents per email. Wow, that's pretty expensive. Let's do this, let's do for 30 days free trial. That's Let's keep it generous. First, 50 emails free. And then let's do 0 0.04 dollar per email beyond that. This is the specification document. If you want to add market research before that, that's fine. It's irrelevant for the developers. If I would build my own PRD, probably I'd add like a video of me going through onboarding, showing me analyzing the market and understanding competitors, trying to figure out the potential. But for now, we're focusing on the PRD, so I'm on the PRD. So if we do this, we're already we're winning over the competition, okay? We have a 30 days free trial, which they don't offer. We have first 50 emails for free, and then we have like 20% cheaper price again this is something you can definitely play with in the future okay i'm gonna also highlight future everything that is in the future i'm just gonna highlight so they will know you know what let's highlight the entire thing so they will know it's not something they need to plan for the first version the developers so when i get an offer for building this then it's going to be within the game so the key players we have three key players in this right we have customers we have the store the merchant so he will need to have some sort of an admin dashboard to see be able to operate the app and view data so we have customers and then we have super admin this is me the app developer and we'll need let's say control merchant discounts what else for now i think it's discounts maybe maybe free trials eh let's just keep it this way so control merchant discounts and this is for future because i don't think i need it for the first version all right so that's it let's see we got the store phone store admin and super admin let's start with this store admin app will only have one page since the app is so simple at the beginning right i only need a toggle to turn on and off the app that's all i need so it will only have one page at the top of the page a button to turn on and off the app uh, of course when the app is off google one tap widget won't be displayed great then below the button we'll have table with all the information collected one tap widget all right email first name last name and then comment developer if there is more info okay so comments to developer let's make it blue okay so this is what we need to have in the store admin we should also say that basically every time we collect an email we want to make sure this data also passes to shopify if there is an existing customers we're just going to add the information if there is no existing customers we're just going to create a new customer Okay, great. So we got this. Very simple. We can maybe add an, a button to export. Again, that's kind of moving forward to the future. So I'm just going to add here another comment for future optional features. And so in here we have, let's say, export feature. We can talk about this feature later. Then we have here the storefront. Let's see what needs to happen in the storefront. Oh, by the way, I also see that they are offering discount in exchange for it. So let's say another feature we can think about is offer a discount exchange for the email. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna add a few points for each one of these later on, but it's really, I'm trying to figure out what is the thing that is a must and what is everything else. All right, I'm going to stay in the mind. So in the storefront, basically this is, once the app is enabled, we're just going to display the, the thing, right? There's nothing else. Okay, let's just say, just load on every page of the store and on every 
page load. So if it happens multiple times, let's say it's moving between pages, between different products, it's going to load every time until the customer accept or decline the, the thing. That's everything we have on the front end. In terms of locations, I don't think it really matters what location it is. Actually, that's a nice feature to add for the future. Option to control the widget location all right so we have another feature here that's great and on every page load and it should also load on mobile should also load on mobile so i think this is it for the storefront super simple and again guys i know this is a super simple app and i intentionally selected a very simple app to build i don't want to go for something complex in this video i just want to explain the principles behind right and then for the super admin which we know it's future okay oh into store admin we're gonna need to place a few other things like live chat support but i guess that's something we can add on later live chat support let's add it i think that's a must from the very get-go and live chat support widget by Chris that's simple that's a line of code it's nothing for them so we've been in the super admin dashboard right so in the super admin dashboard we will need being able to log into the merchant store that will help us also support merchants whenever they need we'll need ability to provide percent discount on the app let's say we want to offer a merchant 50 percent off on the entire pricing no that's percent discount that's good and then we can also change the 12 days left and maybe change the amount of free emails capture right we said we're going to give them 50 emails for free so maybe for some customers we want to say oh you know what if you install i'm giving you 100 instead of 50 so all of this this is future so we're going to keep it in here and you know you can go crazier you can say i don't know if you want to create a flat rate pricing for a given merchant or if you want to reset data for the merchant you can take it to a few different levels if you want to see specific data for each store we, you can add that but this is the basic functionality i think you'll need in the future uh, when it comes to refunds you can refund customers from shopify directly so it's not a big deal but that's what i would say is kind of a something quick to get started from and then for the back end the back end this should be filled by a cto or some someone technical if you are a non-technical developer it's not such a big deal i would recommend having someone who is technical friend going over it but if not you can just get feedback from a bunch of developers and and finding this app these are the really basic consideration to have you can let the developer look at it okay developer recommendations in here we're going to add a bunch of other stuff Okay, we have this section, we mainly the developer or CTO. Of course, if you have a technical friend, that's the CTO. That's that's kind of requirements. Information needs to be saved in a database. Methods and actions of the app repeat themselves. Let's see, so we don't have duplicate code. Server, uh, database, code, technologies. One note that I'm going to add here, the design. For the design, we'll use Shopify Polaris. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Shopify Polaris is a design system by Shopify. So we're going to ask the developers to use that. You can actually download the Figma kit and, and uh, design this way, but this is just going to make things much quicker for the developers to design. By the way, everything we're doing in here, this is just a specification. The, there's another video we need to create about mockups and how to get it done. Again, if you find this interesting, just comment mockups in the comment section below and we'll make sure to create that video for you. All right, so this is something that we want them to use, Shopify Polaris another thing that is important technically wise let's say it's the one tap that's just yeah that we're going to tell the developers please go through go one tap not requirements documentations shopify's guidelines and api so this is kind of requirements for the developers and of course in here they can add all their inputs and questions. We're done pretty much with the basic stuff. Now let's take the up to the next level because we all know that this is not going to be enough. So some features that we can think about. First of all, we have the export feature. Probably we're going to use it through a CSV file. So offer a discount in exchange for the email. This is where allow the merchant to set a discount for the merchant. Percent discount, flat rate discount, free shipping. It's two separate features, but that will help have this feature better build default. And this is, by the way, something we need to set up for everything default. Okay, for everything you build, you need to put in the default. Otherwise, it's just not going to be obvious to the developer. The default text should be 
All right, that's, that's the default text we're going to add. Then option to control widget location. Height. I, I don't know if height, but uh, let's say distance from top, bottom, left, right in percentage. Let's have another new feature. Let's say we want analytics. Add analytics table to the top of the dashboard between the button and the table of subscribers. Okay, so uh, let's add some analytics, for example. And that's going to be super important for merchants. Let's add a way for them to know how many saw it, how many subscribers they got, what's the conversion rate of it. I mean, out of those who saw it, how many actually became subscribers. And then revenue, especially if you have a discount, how many actually after provided the email completed the purchase. So this is important. This is for analytics. And then if we talk about conversion rate, this is the one thing that is the most important to merchants. Let's think about conversion rate boosters. So the discount actually is one of them, okay? Provide a discount that's one of them definitely let's say add a timer allow merchants to limit the time for the discount or allow merchants to limit the time for the widget meaning once the time is over the widget disappears and the customer just loses the option to subscribe for the discount and of course we'll need a field to control the time and to design now we already have here a way to control the text. So I guess maybe we shouldn't add, add a text to the timer as well. Just going to be simpler this way. So we have timer, we have maybe a darken this way. You know what, when you go to a website and suddenly every, everything becomes blur or dark and that's the only thing that shows up, maybe darkening the screen so that they will focus on the widget. That could be a checkbox. And we can also make it check by default. So we can increase conversion rate. Again, these are future features we can think about. Let's say, I'm not sure if uh, conversion rate boosters, but maybe we can do display settings. When will the widget be displayed? Allow merchant to only display the widget in certain cases. And it can be based on time delay, based on specific pages really whatever you want this is just an example and, and i can really if I, if I just take this future features i didn't talk about different buttons different settings where they're going to be these are future features because they are not as important as the others okay i'm going to put it like an additional page and this is it guys i think this is the very basic version you need you got the pricing you got the base price the app itself is like one page that's all you need the entire specification document it's like three pages half a page is for the developers and another page is for future features you can think about later on now whenever you go to the developer and ask for time estimation i would add time estimations for this you will need to dive deeper a little bit into the future optional features but for now I think it's more than good enough because the developers shouldn't focus on that they just should focus on this yeah guys let me know what you think by the way if you like it we do have a free crash course I'll put it in the description below on how to build a Shopify app it's like six episodes completely free and if you're really serious about it we also have a full-length course like 86 episodes something like that where we take you through the entire process of coming from nothing all the way into generating revenue on the app store we're actually building an app with you and going through this entire process again coming up with ideas market research specification designs hiring developers uh, managing the development process going live on the app store generating revenue and then wine swings and repeat this is it i hope you like the video so hit the like button because i'm working super hard on these videos subscribe and thank you for watching if you have any questions just make sure to comment them in the comment section below and i'll see you on the next video bye for now